Un tout petit mot de préambule, Jim, et je vous laisse euh, uh, Jim, interroger M. de Marjorie ensuite. Me, just like pour que vous sachiez, puisque vous nous rejoignez, euh, alors que, que deux séances plénières se sont tenues Sir, tout à fait passionnantes, we have had two chacune extremely interesting la question de la gouvernance, uh, just now about, uh, uh, et, et évidemment dans un contexte particulier qui est celui de cette crise now, uh, mondiale que, que nous connaissons aujourd'hui. Uh, alors, was ce qui a été dit d'une façon générale pour dégager des, des grandes lignes de force, Now, what was euh, et c'était notamment Jean-Claude Trichet il y a un peu dit, la nécessité de la, la transparence, by, uh, euh, Trichet euh, ce qui vient d'être dit, l'impératif nécessité du respect des règles de droit, Then, uh, notamment de droit international, a, uh, pour les États, peut-être même l'impérieuse nécessité pour les grands d'apparaître comme des modèles, dans cet enjeu du respect du droit international, Um, and maybe vous, also a responsibility for the large powers to serve as a role model, an effective one. one. And then what we now want to do with you, Monsieur de Marjorie, is to look still in the issue of uh, governance at the specific issue of energy. Now, Monsieur de Montréal, when he introduced um, the working sessions to uh, the WPC, highlighted the fact that the econo economics and politics are very closely intertwined now. So, Jin, over to you. To, uh, welcome you here uh, to have a discussion about how private companies... <laughs> you, you shocked me for there for a moment. Uh, how private companies can contribute to uh, good governance, good global governance. What is the role of the private sector, uh, but particularly of energy companies. I, we look forward to your remarks, and I wonder if uh, in the remarks or perhaps at the conclusion of your remarks you might address specifically the point uh, that is on everybody's mind, and that is the extreme volatility of energy prices over the past year, and whether or not that has contributed greatly to the lack of confidence that is at the base of the current financial crisis. So I'll turn it over to you for a few remarks, and then we'll come back with some more questions. Bon, d'abord, bonjour à, à toutes et à tous. Thank you very much uh, for giving me the floor. I uh, would like to thank each and every one of you uh, to joining us here. Uh, I've been told to basically be uh, the, um, the act that would keep you happy in between uh, the more previous, the more serious session before and. Uh, and the presidents that are coming afterwards. Anyway, let me just say that um, we have to focus on priorities. And the, the fact is that we have to prioritize, and we have to make sure that our leaders, and maybe uh, leaders in uh, the business community also, should identify their priorities and stick to them. Because precisely you said, Jim, that all sorts of people are lost and uh, don't know exactly what we're talking about on climate change, on uh, purchasing power, on... Uh, on the conflict in terms of time frames between the two issues. Now, of course, that means that we might need to look at these issues and let some time, uh, let, let time take its course. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't do anything, but that we should take these things into account. Now, there are other countries we have to deal with and work with. They sometimes are in a different context and a different uh, state, and we have to take that into account when we want to involve them, to include them in the process. Otherwise, we risk excluding them and uh, being at a loss. So once again, uh, we have to focus on identifying priorities and prioritizing them. Now, corporate governance is important, of course, but is maybe not the most acute issue in terms of the global crisis, the current global crisis. Now, uh, corporate governance is something we've worked on quite a lot. I can tell you that uh, in total, uh, the um, chairman of the board, non-executive chairman, and uh, the um, CEO of Total, have already applied, even before the um, uh, industry rules were released yesterday, these rules. We are not involved in 
on les anticipe même wild capitalism, savage capitalism. Uh, we know these rules, we act upon them, we preempt them in a way. Um, we have to realize that the subprime crisis was in fact uh, the works of a of the of uh, Anglo-Saxon bankers. Uh, we have to bear in mind also that uh, this golden handshake issue that people are talking about, uh, it's true that in France uh, we call them a golden parachute, but uh, it's true that uh, executives in a company uh, haven't got specific uh, contracts and uh, it makes sense in a way when you set, uh, put an end to the contract and to discussions, uh, it does make sense to um, get a golden handshake. Now, a number of politicians will probably discuss these things, but I think that when you completely confuse core business with other uh, businesses, uh, for instance, uh, banking and insurance, uh, when you have uh, construction companies uh, uh, take on business activities, uh, it doesn't make sense for them to get golden handshakes. Uh, I think when you start confusing issues, uh, you should um, get drawn to court. So I think that uh, the current crisis has to be settled, but you can't settle it with golden handshakes. You have to identify the priorities, identify how we can get out of the crisis, try and identify what the crisis is exactly and what we can do, maybe in my line of business, in energy.